Hey folks, today uh, what we're going to go over is we're going to go over Ableton's uh, clip view and arrangement view and kind of uh, some techniques you can use to uh, find your own groove. Uh, I know oftentimes when I'm writing music I uh, tend to dance around and if I can get myself to dance then I got something good I feel. But um, yeah, some other doodads and stuff like you know your default template, uh, automatic MIDI uh, mapped already and all that stuff and uh, enjoy the video. Okay, so we have our default template that I went over in a previous video, and so you can see mine. Uh, I got an audio track, MIDI track, drum rack. Each of these, except for the MIDI track, or maybe the audio track, has the standard effects that I've talked about that I personally like to play with on all tracks, which is an EQ and an auto filter. But what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to look at this. And again, with the default template, I have my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine mapped and also be sure not to map zero because zero in arrangement view is how you activate and deactivate clips so you can find other things just make sure that they don't already have a specified purpose so what we're going to do is uh we're going to do it like you're just normally writing a song so let me go here i'm going to make a midi track i got my uh my drums already uh oh i don't have my drums yes so the drum rack and so what i'm going to do is bring in a um a drum rack that i already have saved and again, you should save these things because space is cheap. So let's go to the uh, the one. It's like my super drum rack. It has like eight of every single type of uh, sample, uh, like eight kicks, eight snares, lots more hi-hats and cymbals and stuff like that. But by doing so, look at I already have my drum kit. And you can make a drum kit. You can bring in a drum kit. Do, do what's good for you. Do what's good for you. So we go back to this view, which is the standard arrangement view. And... Um, I've been making a lot of dance music, so let's just uh, let's just make some dance music, right? We're just going to duplicate that, and then now if we play, it's kind of slow. So let's do this, and then we'll just duplicate it. Oops, and duplicate it. Oh, oh, because I didn't loop. All right. So now if we loop, we just have a dance beat, and uh, let's throw in some hi hats here. You know, just a little bit, just a little dancey beat. Oh, that's a snare. <laughs> Okay, so yes, and we'll just throw in a snare on every other hit. That one's off. Okay, and duplicate this, and then now we have just our our little basic stuff. Um, let's do hi hat. Let's just do. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we'll do that, and just a just basic basic dance beat. Just a basic dance beat, right? So. Right. Okay, so now we have that. And normally from here, you know, you would add your different parts, your bass lines, your, your synth, whatever. Um, you know, and we have this. So, but what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's bring this, you can just drag it around and then go into clip view. And now we have, we'll just call this clip one beats or B arts. Let's just delete that. Okay, so now if we play our clip, Okay, so we can see all the uh, arrangement right here. You know, and this is just in the clip, so if I actually add something uh, to this, it will not affect this view. And, and you can see right here, the reason it's kind of grayed out is because I'm actually overriding the arrangement view with clip view. And you uh, can see it right here with this, uh, this button right here that's uh, kind of like a orangey red color. If you disable that, now it's just plain arrangement view. But we're going to focus on clip view, just so that way we can make a whole bunch of clips and, and bring it in and stuff like that. Let's, um, let's go ahead and go back in here. We got our clip, right? Let's, you know, let's make another beat. We're going to copy it and we'll call it clip, <laughs> clip two beats. Let's add in some claps. Actually, let's make this a different color too. Uh, I like to have all my things different colors because it makes them makes them uh, easier to identify so now we have this uh we have this new one so we're gonna play this clip okay we got our we got our snares let's uh let's just copy our snares and we're gonna we're gonna make it into a clap we're gonna trans we're gonna actually just duplicate it okay let's do this okay and then we have some uh standard claps let's just check our our drum beat Okay, there's our claps. You can uh, see that they're running. And so now we have two clips. We have a clip. Um, we have a clip with just beats. Let's just do kick, kick, snare, hi hat. Actually, it's an open hi hat. 
and abbreviations, kick, snare, open hi-hat, and this is going to be kick and snare and clap and open hi-hat. So now that we have these, we can just switch in between them, right? We can just, so, you know, and these clips fire based around the, um, the quantization that you have set. Um, you can go into individual clips and change their quantization on how they fire, uh, but that's not what I'm gonna go over today. I'm just gonna go over just the idea of having um, clips and using clips, you know, it's a, it's a pretty elusive thing at time. I know a lot of people that have come from different DAWs besides Ableton always are curious about what is this clip view, you know? We're, we're used to kind of seeing this kind of view, this arrangement view, and if I wanted my beats, you know, here I would drag, and then this, and then basically every time I would write a new part, I would loop it, you know, just just so I could write parts, so I could hear those loops. And so the thing that clip uh, view kind of solves um, is instead of having to go here and take the looper uh, and move it around to the part that you're writing for, you can just be in uh, this view and just have these things loop. So now I'm in, uh, this is being overridden, as you can see. And so, uh, yeah, and then from here, you know, we can make more clips. Let's just, let's, let's do a little, let's do a little, little, little breakdown here. Let's just do, uh, we'll call it break, breakdown one. And um, what we can do is let's just kill all that, kill all that, kill all that. And then what we'll do is we'll make a, a, a little build up here. Actually, we'll just do it like right here and we'll make this in half. So now what we'll do is we have the, just the little, little kicks going and what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll just make a little like a little build here and uh, where the snare is at uh, cool tough snare uh, yeah yeah and we'll just, we'll just do this we're not even gonna worry if it sounds great we just have a little a little a little build up so now if I oh I guess I got the hi-hats yeah it just loops right and you don't have to have it loop but the idea of this is to have um, these clips that you can trigger right and so what the whole point of this is, is just to try to find a, uh, a different like workflow other than the arrangement view. You can still use arrangement view. Um, you can use both. You can do one or the other. It doesn't matter. It's all up to you and what, you, what you're going to find works for you best. These are just suggestions. They're all just suggestions. So we have our clip, right? And then we have our breakdown. And then it... Right, and so you can just trigger these clips. I'm just triggering them with my mouse right now, but um, I have uh, different MIDI controllers and stuff like that that uh, trigger stuff. I have the push, the launch pads, and stuff that work really uh, well in clip view. So you know, and now, now if we uh, save this, right? Um, we don't need to save the kit. What we want to do is actually save the clips. So the kit's already saved. It's called the uh, the one demo for this for this uh, for this video. But let's actually go to our user library and what we want to do is uh, let's just do clip groups and here we'll make a new uh, folder. We'll call it uh, drums. And what we can do is we just drag. Just drag this in here, right? And so now we have the one. And so we're actually going to rename this. Let's rename this. We're going to call it uh, video uh, clip demo or something, right? It doesn't really matter. So now what's nice is let's just say we have that saved, let's make a new track. Let's just make a whole new live set, right? And so now we come into our default template, which I highly encourage people set up. Um, we got our sends, we got our returns. Uh, also on the master channel, we have, our, we have our loopers, which I have like mapped and stuff like that. And then also what's nice is that in our drum rack, we actually have our, um, our, MIDI, our MIDI map to the, uh, the different gains and also the frequency of the cutoff. Already mapped, default templates, you should do it. Or just try it, just try it. But now, if we go into our video clip demo in our clip groups and we drag this on the rack, you know, boom. Oh, well, it was supposed to actually replace that rack, but oh, well, that's that's fine too. So now we have our clips again, right? And when you bring in the clips, uh, if you have anything in arrangement mode that was saved with that clip group, it'll actually also bring that in. So from here, what we can also uh, do now, so we have... Uh, a very loud drum beat. Let's turn that down a little bit. Right, just hard hitting, and then the breakdown. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so now, but like you can imagine, if you were doing this earlier, or if you saved groups, what you can do is uh, just bring them in, right? And so you're grooving, you're trying to find your stuff instead of looping in arrangement view. Um, 
with just those parts, what you can do is start start controlling uh, the clips, just as you would an arrangement view with uh, with just having it loop and adding stuff. But you can also do is if you've saved uh, clip groups before, you can bring them in, and this is the kind of fun. Let's bring in I think this is like a trance bass or something like that. I've been making a lot of dance music, so. Uh, yeah, so the what's also kind of nifty if you notice is that I brought in that group and the music did not stutter. Every now and then it will, depending on your uh, processing power of your computer. But um, yeah, so no stutter and you just basically hot swap clips and now let's play the bass line, you know? Let's see how it sounds. Okay, so, you know, that sounds kind of nifty. Let's do a little breakdown. Yep. So and the idea is if you have controllers and stuff, you can just push this and what you can do is you can just start finding your groove, you know? Let's add in like a lead from another group that I've saved. Let's do a of a nasty baby lead. That's like a that's like an acid lead, I think. So we have a nasty baby lead now. So let's play that. Not the doesn't sound all great together, but another thing. So let's stop all this. And what you can do from here is I highly, again, I highly recommend making these clips and saving them and stuff, but any of these, any of these things in, in clip view can just be dragged into arrangement view, right? So you can be like, uh, okay, I want, you know, this here. Always make sure that um, if you want to hear it in arrangement view that this uh, particular button, what is this called? Uh, back to arrangement, is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, so you just turn that off and then your arrangement view is active. So now if we just do this, we have our acid, nasty baby lead and then let's just let's let's do this let's uh let's just see if we can just drag the clips in let's oops yeah so wrong thing but since they're midi clips so now we just dragged and in easy mode if you want to go into arrangement mode you have that option but saving those clips and being able to do stuff really for me helps my workflow you know and and you could you can do whatever you want. Again, that's one of the things I really love about Ableton is just there are different options. And I think some other DAWs are, are coming around now and seeing that people do like to work in clips and just looping clips and stuff. And that's kind of what a lot of people do in arrangement. And then you go back through and make subtle tweaks and then it makes the parts different. But, uh, you know, usually a lot of times uh, people use like bass, a bass arrangement and then do modifications to it to make newer parts or transitions or next parts and that applies to drums bass line synths anything vocals anything you know um, but having these things in clip view is uh, is really nice uh, and also having them saved because then you're like oh, you know what I don't want any of that I don't like any of that that that's not what I was feeling let's try this ethereal lead which is another thing I've uh, saved uh, which has a Cthulhu arpeggiator step sequencer thing we won't worry about that but let's try this okay that's kind of pretty okay and then we got our little breakdown okay and you know and if you like this keep it if you don't like it then don't keep it but the idea is it's just the ability to bring in stuff right let's try let's try this translate now let's see if this if this works is this gonna sound good I don't know, but we didn't have to write it because we already wrote it and we're just reusing stuff, so here. Yeah, you know, and it's just a way to basically help you find your groove, you know, and one of the things I really like is the ability to push buttons and, 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 and feel like I'm manipulating the music on the fly. And I use all these techniques in my live performance that I do, which has a ton, a ton of uh, clips, tracks, MIDI, um, on the fly, percussion, and we can go into that more um, in different videos, but you know, I just uh, encourage, encourage this, and I think people would be surprised. Uh, there are a couple things that you need to remember to do if you do uh, use this workflow, that if you change something, like for example, say I change this break, right? Uh, let's just say I want a little, uh, you know, drum roll, and then, you know, I don't know, a clap clap something you know um, changing stuff in arrangement view will not change it in the clip view so if I look at this clip again and you can see I don't have uh, the increase in uh, velocity I don't have my claps so if you do change stuff in arrangement view you also should then take this clip drag it right back and then uh, again you know you don't have to do this every time like you change a clip but basically 
Um, when you save it, it'll save the project, but what it won't do is actually save your clip group. So you have to um, go back through and, uh, and, and, and drag this back in. It's gonna be a different thing right now because I renamed it in here. Um, but yeah, yeah, so you have to do that. Maybe in the future they'll have some sort of like toggle preference where if you change clips in the arrangement view, it'll affect the uh, clip view. That could be kind of cool. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm not saying don't use arrangement view. I'm saying since you are in Ableton, you have the option of both. Why not? Save everything. Disk space is cheap, right? And this is a this is definitely something that helps helps my workflow. And it's it, again, it is just one way to do things. I mean, you don't have to commit to this, and every time you write a song or do whatever, you have to do this. But it's nice to have the options to do this. And that's where the previous video about um, about uh, workflow and stuff to save your information and your and your clip groups and, and everything is really so you can get to this point and then just drag stuff in, just drag stuff in. It's like building stuff with Lego. It's super easy. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think that's uh, I think that's it. So again, uh, thank you for watching and like, subscribe, ring a ding ding notifications, and. I shall see you in the next video. Be well.